Welcome back to a, a rainy and wet Donington Park. I am saturated because I've just been packed to the car to fetch the kit. But one person that is absolutely bone dry and it's an absolute pleasure. The World Endurance Champion and McCam standing rider this year, for, uh, this weekend for McCam Yamaha, Nico Canepa. Nico, welcome to Off Track. Hello, hi everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for joining us. A real pleasure to have you in the paddock and thank you to McCam Yamaha for allowing us a bit of time with you. How's your time been at Donington Park so far? Well, that's amazing. I'm so excited to race this weekend in the British Superbike Championship and especially with this team because I've done uh, pretty much everything in my career, every championship, every every different bikes and uh, I never uh, came to race to BSB before. So it's a great, uh, great experience for me and I'm really excited. How are you finding the, the change to the BSB spec machines? You've ridden a Yamaha R1 in the World Endurance Championship to great success. But it's, it's a little bit different coming here on the, the, the equipment that McCam Yamaha run in the British Superbike Championship. Yeah, I think I've tried the R1 in every possible configuration from World Superbike because I'm the test rider, World Endurance, uh, Italian Championship, Moto America, uh, the standard R1, the GYTR Pro, the, every kind of R1 that you can think about it. I've tried it, uh, probably developed it, <laughs> so I really know knows everything. But uh, it was the first time that I tried the BSB spec. And uh, to be honest, I'm really surprised how the the guys built the bike in a, in such a great way because it's uh, I was really worried about the lack of that the, there is no traction control, there is no wheelie control. So I know that these monsters at 230 horsepower or so is uh, difficult to use them with no no electronics. But uh, to be honest, they did an amazing job, and uh, the bikes feel really natural to ride, really nice. I had to adapt a little bit my riding style because it's not really same same as the super bike very different from the World Endurance, but uh, I, I'm very satisfied just with uh, two sessions on the bike. Today in qualifying was already quite good. And you've made some strong showings this weekend as well. Now, you've had some sec success around the track previously in, um, in the Superstock Championship, but this is a little bit different on the Superbike now, but you've adapted so quickly. It's been really good to see. Yeah, luckily I have the opportunity to ride a lot and to change bike and tires every weekend so uh, I, I must adapt quickly every time because uh, next week I will be racing in the Italian Championship with a different R1 with uh, different tires and uh, last week uh, two weeks ago I was racing with different tires again with the EWC bike so every time is a different bike and I need to adapt quickly so has been uh, nice but also to be honest it's not only thanks to me but it's also thanks to the team they really set up a bike in a, in a great way and I really enjoyed to ride it. That makes a big difference, doesn't it? When you're joining such a successful and experienced team as McCam Yamaha to come into something such as competitive as the Bennett's British Superbike Championship is, it gives you confidence then to perform knowing that the bike underneath you is as well prepared as it's going to be. Yeah, it's great. When you when you come in a, such a great team, you know, you, you have, uh, also if you don't know the people personally, and they knew only a few people, uh, not everyone, I don't know the crew so much, but uh, I trust them 100% because I know that they win so many races, they win championship, they, they are such a winning team. So I know that uh, they know how to do their job, so I don't even have to think about it. So usually when you when you go in a new team, you have to check everything, be extra careful because you never know who is working on the bike. And uh, But with this team, this I don't even think about it. I just go and uh, I have fully 100% trust in them and uh, they are showing me that they are the best. It was, it was a difficult afternoon with the weather, typically British weather. Yeah. Well, welcome to the UK. No big surprise at Donington Park in October. Well, we're nearly in October now. Um, it was a fairly short race for you, but going through the, the process of starting the race and the tyre choice and everything else made it a, a little bit of a difficult start for your first race in, in, in BSP. Yeah, we have been really unlucky, but uh, I mean, uh, I'm really, really satisfied about the job we did and the progress we did during the weekend because uh, yesterday, of course, FP1, FP2 has been a little bit more difficult. I felt much more confident this morning in FP3 and in the qualifying, uh, I was able to go from Q1 to Q2 and uh, finish in seventh place. So it was, uh, to, to be honest, for me, it was a really, really great result. Unfortunately, the race didn't go as expected, but uh, I'm really happy because tomorrow there is two more races. Normally in EWC, when the race doesn't go as expected, I have to wait two months for the next one. <laughs> now I just sleep tonight and tomorrow I start again. So hopefully the weather will be a little bit more nice with us and uh, we will see. I'm hopeful that the weather is better tomorrow. Oli, is the weather better tomorrow if you had a look? I'm 
<laughs> McCann's Yamaha press office of Ollie Rushby just at the side. We've got to say thank you very much to Ollie for, for organizing this and for Jason on Friday as well. It's It's been an absolute pleasure to do this. Um, Nico, tell me about the season for you up to this point. It's been a fantastic time in, in the EWC, but you've been kind of here, there and everywhere. It, it, you, you barely stop as a rider. I love it. I'm getting older, so I'm shooting the last <laughs> because I'm really, I'm really enjoying to ride. And the the, um, the more I get older, the more I enjoy the races because you know when you're younger, probably you have more pressure and you are more stressed to doing the races. And uh, now I feel like uh, I am stress free and I'm enjoying it and I can give my best. So everything comes easier and uh, I really enjoy. So when I have the opportunity to uh, be part of the Yamaha family and they give me the opportunity to ride these amazing bikes, how, how can I say no? Is it possible? Absolutely true. <laughs> and th this is a good thing. When also as, as you do get older as a rider, you have the chance to be in the moment and to be able to enjoy the experiences that you have without everything going so fast towards you. That must be so comforting to do. Yes, it's, uh, it's really nice. And uh, also, to be honest, the EWC also teach me a lot because is uh, there are such long races, 24 hours, and everything that uh, you go through everything, and you try and you learn a lot because you you know that you will have a problem, you know that it will be raining and intermediate and dry and hot and uh, cold, and you will have every kind of stuff. You'll have problems on the bike, you'll have problems on the tires, problems on yourself physically, and everything. So, they, they really teach you a lot to how to do a quick problem solving so this is nice as well when you the endurance racing fascinates me because it's something that we don't get involved with too often but with the the, the yacht team that you, you're with and the experience and um, the successes that you've had through this season how do you prepare for a, a world endurance championship well, to be honest, uh, we we train a lot, but uh, I believe that we train the same as the BSB riders, the World Superbike riders. It's not much more that you can do. And uh, the, in the 24 hours, I believe that uh, if you want to win, uh, the difference is not too much physical, but is more mentally because is something like uh, you know that physically you will be tired, that uh, at some point uh, you you will be tired and and. Uh, there's nothing you can do about it, but uh, what makes the difference is if you're strong mentally, if you have really a strong target inside in, in your head uh, and you want to achieve it, uh, you, you can do it. What's been the highlight for you this season as you look back? Well, uh, tomorrow will be, uh, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. I was thinking ahead already. That's great. No, to be honest, it's, uh, it's been very nice moments this year. Uh, the highlight for sure is the, the moment that I realized that it could be, we could be world champions again. And uh, this for me is, uh, is a great achievement after a few years when, uh, uh, I have to be honest, we had uh, a lot of uh, problems, a lot of bad luck, and uh, we were not able to, to bring the title home. But th this season went everything great and uh, we had to fight for it. And uh, when I realized that we could really win the championship, uh, it was such a good relief and a good uh, good feeling for me, for the team, for my teammates, uh, my family and everyone. With, with so much experience over the years within the Yamaha family and, and within motorcycle racing, you, you've you now arrived in, in BSB for the next two rounds, for here and for Brands Hatch. Do you think maybe you could do a full season here one time? Yeah, this is, I think is uh, too late now in my career. Would have been nice in the past for sure. But uh, I have a huge respect for the riders that are competing in the BSB because I, uh, I always heard that the level is so high here. But when I, when I came here yesterday, I really realized that uh, what they say is true, that the level is so high. I also compared a lot of times with the World Superbike uh, in Donington here. And if you consider that the bike are not same, that there is no electronic and everything is impressive what the top 10 riders here can do, but also the top 15, let's say and uh, is, is really nice. And uh, uh, so I'm not sure I want to race one full season in BSB, <laughs> to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> Maybe you have a look at, um, at Alton Park and Cadwell yeah. Park. They, they tend to, to make your eyes widen a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. There, is, there are some tracks that are really, really difficult that you have to know them very, very well. And uh, there is many riders that are really specialists of this championship and uh, they, they are really strong. Uh, in here, you know, this is a world championship track. I raced here with MotoGP in the past, with Superbike, with Superstock, with everything. So I know the track very well. Brands Edge is another GP track, let's say. It's an amazing track. And uh, so 
I was lucky that uh, these two races were at the end of the championship and I can uh, uh, maybe do a better result. But for sure, I, they would have killed me in, in some small truck. So I, I, I'm happy I'm here. You, this is where you know you can perform. It, it's fine. It's, it's, this is okay. Um, talk to me about riding MotoGP bikes because we we don't often get to talk to the MotoGP riders on the show because we don't get to MotoGP and you can't do the video so yeah <laughs> it, it's it's again it's fascinating to to sit down with someone who's ridden so many different machines over the years tell me about a MotoGP bike compared to riding the Macam Yamaha R1 I know they're, they're well, night and day but it's been uh, it's been a long time so for sure the MotoGP changed a lot in the last uh, five six years and uh, with all the aerodynamics and stuff and looks like uh, bikes a bit uh, uh, not, not easy but a bit easier to to ride uh, in the past in the beginning of the 1000 cc moto gp or the 800 like this the, they were pure beasts and the electronic was not much sophisticated like now and uh, was really really hard to ride them and uh, that's why so many big champions like like Valentino or Lorenzo or Pedrosa that we see still competitive now uh, and many of them they they they, they were such legends because it was so difficult to be to be fast and competitive in that period with the with the MotoGP the bike is uh, much more stiff and uh, is a prop prototype the tires are stiffer the, the bikes are stiffer is a different riding style and uh, for sure here is more similar to what the, the feeling that the customer can have when they buy an r1 so is um, is i'm really fascinated about the world superbike and the bsb the, the the championship where you can race with an r1 that the customer can buy on the shop and have uh, the same feeling as us and this for me is uh, is really, really nice MotoGP is the uh, is the top of the top sure but uh, is a, is a different way of riding the bike and uh, huge respect for them because they, they go so fast the lap time that they are doing is are unbelievable but is two different things there's there's no crossover is there really so the, the r1 that you ride here and in world endurance the customers that buy it on the win on the sunday buy on their sell on the monday <laughs> yeah. it, it makes a big difference to see what you do on the r1 and it's had so much so much success this year last year it's a great package to be on and, and to ride so many varieties of it. I think that, that that's testament to you and, and how you do it because it can't be easy going championship to championship, different tires, different spec with the bikes. You have to reprogram each time. Yeah, it's not easy, especially when the, 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 the race weekend is not so long usually. So you don't have so much time to adapt. You know, you go here, for example, you go FP1, FP2, you have to be in the top 12 if you want to be in the Q2. And uh, it's been tough for me, to be honest. But uh, is uh, skills that you learn uh, with uh, doing it every time and they keep practicing changing tires changing bikes and then the end uh, it's uh, I, I can adapt quite quickly but it, it hasn't been always easy what happens for the rest of the year now after, after brands hatch what, what's planned for the rest of the year well some holidays and <laughs> i'm not well, surprised <laughs> well uh, i have a big uh, appointment that is the fim gala for the world championship title and this is uh, it's gonna be nice fancy dress and my girlfriend is happy because uh, she can dress well for the event so <laughs> the sharp suit <laughs> yes. the pretty dress yes, everything exactly. proper night out <laughs> exactly so this is gonna be this is gonna be fun for sure and uh, then uh, you know i'm not the kind of guy that really stop training uh, or something i want to keep stay focused because uh, Next year, if we will race with the number one on the bike, I want to keep it for the year after. So, uh, is uh, every is possible to win a championship? The most difficult is to reconfirm and to win again. But uh, we have this target in uh, in our mind, and uh, we will try our best to to do it again. So, for next season, back in the World Endurance Championships, ready to go again, defend the number one plate. What else do you have planned around that? Because there's only a handful of rounds that make up the endurance world championship so yeah, how else we, do you keep, keep busy for next year well i keep the same plan as uh, in the last few years so i'm the test rider for world superbike and uh, we do quite a few tests during the year it's nice because i'm also involved in the development of the superbike and uh, i see the good result of top rack of locatelli remy gardner today was also very fast so it's nice to see them so competitive and uh, i go to every world superbike race because uh, I am the coach for them as well, so um, I am uh, trying my best to help them to improve, to, to be competitive in the race, to win races, and uh, this is a great satisfaction as well. Is on the other side of the garage, is not uh, not riding, not with the helmet, different kind of adrenaline, but um, still a lot of responsibility, and uh, really nice to do it. So 
I will uh, I will continue with the same plan. At the end, I'm very very busy during the season between tests, uh, AWC <laughs> races and tests, and uh, World Superbike races and tests. But uh, I am uh, I'm happy. It's nice with all the experience that we just spoke about that you can bring that back to Yamaha as a test rider and to the riders at world level as well. For next season, you have a new rider in the camp. Top rack moving on to a different manufacturer. I can see the smile <laughs> on your face now. You have Jonathan Ray joining for next season. How much are you looking forward to working with Jonathan? We are all the team and myself. We are all really, really excited because uh, Johnny is a six time world champion. He's uh, surely one of the best riders in world superbike. And uh, to see that he chose to come to race for us and to because he saw that our bike is competitive, is fast, and he believes he can, uh, he can come back to have the number one again is, uh, is great for us. And uh, I'm really looking forward to work with him because, uh, uh, you know, I, I try to help them, but I also learn a lot from them. And the working with such a great talent, such a champions is, uh, is great for me because I also learned a lot. I see how they behave into the garage, how they explain the problems, uh, how they solve the problems, uh, how they ride, uh, because I look at them on the, uh, on, on the, um, on the track in every, in every session. And it's uh, is really, really nice to see which level they can achieve. And uh, to work with them for me is a, is a pleasure and, and, uh, and an honor. I'm looking forward to seeing how Jonathan progresses and how the, the, the dynamic in the team progresses forward with the Yamaha R1. It, it, I think the, the series needs that now. So a little bit of shake up, riders move into different teams, something new. And to have Jonathan in the team is, is going to be really special for Yamaha for next year. Um, a couple of questions to finish. The first one is in two parts. What is, of all the tracks you've raced, what is your favorite corner and why? Well, that's a difficult question because I've tried many, many, many tracks. Maybe the, the most special for me is uh, the Corkscrew in Laguna Seca is uh, because it's a, it's a corner that is unique in the world that you cannot find nothing similar. And uh, to be there has been, has been funny, yeah. And the, the final question that I ask that, that every new guest we have on the show, what's your best hire car story? Sorry, best hire car best story. Best hire car story. Well, I'm not allowed to say it because I don't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> as a Yamaha test rider no. and as an official factory member, <laughs> you're not going to put yourself on the line. No. So before you rode for Yamaha, what's your best <laughs> hire yeah. car story? Yeah, it was many years ago. I remember when uh, I was still in the MotoGP test team and, uh, well, I, I was still too young to have a car I had to hire a car but uh, there was these uh, the, the, the members of the team that have two three cars and and they were literally eating each other we, <laughs> they didn't care about the cars they were on the we were on the highway and they're really door to door <laughs> eating each other and <laughs> I was this is how I grew up so th th then from that moment it was 15 years ago to now I didn't improve, so it <laughs> <laughs> didn't get better. So it all it all stays the same. <laughs> Nico, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you joining us on the show. Just a nice, nice short, quiet chat. It's been fantastic. No, so, thanks to you. I really, I really, really enjoyed. It's really nice. Thank you. Maybe one day we'll get a chance to do a longer chat, and we can do a little bit of more history. Maybe if we come out to World Superbikes, we'll sit down and, and have an hour and, a, and a, maybe a cup of tea or a beer or something. and just Maybe beer is better. We can do a beer. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy with that. Ollie didn't offer us the beer. We will have a coffee after this. But also thank you to Ollie and McCam Yamaha for, for arranging this. And Nico, best of luck for the rest of the season. We'll see you down at Brands as well. Um, and we hope you go well tomorrow in the next two races. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, thank so you much very much. Time. Cheers, Nico. <laughs> Ciao. Bye-bye.